good morning. Carpetbagger here, and uh, we have left Branson. Actually, after filming yesterday in Branson, I hopped in the car, drove about five and a half hours east, kind of trying to make my way um, home, at least for a quick pit stop before uh, for the, uh, the next journey. Got stuff to do uh, next week, but I was hoping to just at least pop in to my home base for a, a day or so before uh, before then. So, headed east today. Um, but first things first, we have something to take care of, and that is this car. I'm actually um, just as you're driving, especially at night, driving long distances, you tend to get a lot of bug guts encrusted on your car. I just got a uh, just got a car wash last time I was back at home for this trip, but the bug guts have returned. So we're gonna need to, to do to get another uh, car wash done here. Of course, there's a lot of pollen as well. Picked up a ton of pollen in uh, in Branson, but uh, yeah, I can, it's getting to the point. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's getting to the point where it's almost difficult to see through the windshield because of all the uh, splattered bugs. You might be able to see a little better there on the mirror. All the uh, encrusting, you can see wings and legs, and I actually feel bad for <laughs> the poor little bugs. But, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's gross. Look at that. Absolutely infested with bug parts. I need to get this uh, taken care of. Uh, so, you know what that means. It's time for a car wash ride through. Yeah, just look at all that crud on the windshield. Got uh, got really intense on this trip. I guess we have a little automated pay station up here. All right, so this car wash is called Glide Express. They offered a standard wash for $10 or $15 that had some extra stuff, including bug removal. So we'll see if uh, the bug removal does its job. Okay, will you please line up? Got to get our tires right here. Follow the instructions. All right, got it neutral. We've already splattered some uh, some soap on there. Yeah, let's let's get this bugs. I, I paid the extra five dollars for the bug removal, so let's uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope these bugs get removed. Okay. And again, I'm a huge fan of car washes. Not necessarily because they clean your car. I just enjoy the ride. Kind of like a dark ride, you know. You don't have to steer, you don't have to drive, you just head through. And then you know, the, the, the noises, the sounds, kind of relaxing. Oh yeah, get the bugs off there. That was covered in bugs. Look at that glowing blue. Oh, there we go. I always like this part. Actually, this part scared me when I was a kid. Because I thought, I thought there were fish flopping on the windshield, but... Now, when I was a kid, I called this these the Fry Guys, like the Fry Guys from McDonald's. Oh, oh I do think they have some lighting effects here. Did the blue light earlier, the yellow light. Last time I went through was was one of the car washes that doesn't move; it just stays in one spot. So I was hoping this would do a little better. We got the purple. The purple glow there. We got another fry guy here on the side. Uh, oh, okay, we're here into the get some more waters, and then we have the blasters. The blasters there blasting off the water. I do see there is a little bug right there. It didn't get a hundred. It didn't get a hundred percent. Got a green light. I think that means we put it in drive. Well, let's go see. Let's go see what the car looks like. There's actually still a lot of bugs on the windshield, to be honest. <laughs> okay, so definitely an improvement. But yeah, there is a lot of bugs still splattered there. And uh, yeah, I see some bugs there. Yeah, the grill was really caked, but. You can see a lot of bug parts. I know someone someone did tell me that uh, the car wash is just not going to get those bugs off. That it's going to take a, a hand wash. So I may have to look into getting the car hand washed when I um, 
when I get back into uh, back home, or maybe I can find some charity car wash somewhere that can help me out. Also, it's cleaning out some of the trash from my car here, that little station where you can vacuum your car and clean out the trash. And here's a pro tip, if you are traveling as much as I do, every time you stop for gas, get rid of your trash or you wind up sitting in a big mound of trash very quickly. And we have landed in Grand Junction, Tennessee. I saw a sign on the road pointing to a museum and I said, we're gonna have to invoke the EM rule here because here we are at the National Bird Dog Museum. Of course, as I travel the roads of America, it's very hard for me to say no to a museum, especially a museum as specific and as interesting as the National Bird Dog Museum. Now, my understanding is uh, I, I'm not a hunter. I do not go out to the woods um, and then try to uh, obtain animal meat. Um, but my understanding is that a bird dog is a dog that assists a hunter in the catching of birds. So I'm not sure the mechanics of that, but we will learn all about it here at the National Bird Dog Museum. And as we enter the museum here, we see all these statues of different bird dogs. And, uh, oh, okay. So these aren't just random statues of dogs. These are statues of specific bird dogs. So this is Eben, Eben, Ebenstar Lean Mac. Looks like he's got some bird dog championships there. So yeah, what a what a good dog. Good at hunting birds, at least. Who's this? This is uh, okay. This is this is not a specific dog. This the other one was a specific dog. This is a uh, a, a statue of a golden retriever there, and he's uh, looks like he's caught some caught some birds. So some of these dog statues are actual dogs, and others, I guess, are just decorative statues of dogs. This is a real dog here. This is um, Mickle Micklewood Micklewood Scud. I must say these dogs have some uh, interesting names. You can see him leaping up there, possibly diving at a bird. And uh, okay, this this is not a specific dog. This dog just represents the concept of sportsmanship. Either that or it's a dog named sportsmanship. Out here we have a statue of a bird hunter there with his rifle. His uh, bird dog's there behind him. And I guess he is uh, trying to catch these birds. I mean, he's pointing at the birds, so maybe he's like telling his dogs, go get those birds. Let's check out the museum here. Okay, so from what I can tell, a bird dog is a dog that helps someone hunt, either um, helping find where birds are hiding or retrieving birds that have been shot and bringing them back to the hunter. I guess specific types of dogs um, are used. That are, that are good at these activities. And uh, here is a Springer Spaniel. The, uh, I guess that is a type of bird dog. And uh, you see here, this is the, the dog Millie that belonged to uh, uh, George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush. It's kind of a famous White House dog. I don't know if, she, if, that, if Millie ever went bird hunting, but she is the type of dog that would do such a thing. Here's a hat donated to the museum by famed hunter Paul Hazella. And apparently um, the, the little animals there, the golden animals on the hat, represent animals that he himself shot. You see there's an elephant there, lots of horned animals, a bear. And then uh, up above on top of the case, we have some birds. The thing that the dogs in this museum hunt. 
And here, in this case, we have a taxidermy dog, a taxidermy bird dog. This is Count Noble, a bird dog that uh, was born in 1879 then taxidermy in 1891. So this dog here was hunting birds um, before anyone on earth was even alive yet. It does say that Count Noble here is a gift of the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh. Oh, I actually love the, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. I've been there a few times. A great, great uh, natural history museum. But apparently they did not want Count Noble they gave him to the uh, National Bird Dog Museum. I always, I, I kind of have a fascination with, um, you know, animals that, that are taxidermy that like, that were like a specific animal where it's not just like, this is a dog, but no, this is Count Noble, a famed bird dog here. Obviously someone cared a great deal about Count Noble to have him uh, taxidermied and placed in, uh, this display here. And that's one of the beautiful things about taxidermy is that we can uh, preserve well-known animals and we can visit them forever. You know, you can't do that with people. I guess they try to do it with, with Vladimir Lenin, but um, mo most of the time you don't try to taxidermy people. I think that's generally considered a little ghoulish. But uh, you can visit, you know, once, once an, an animal, like a dog or some other animal passes away, we can taxidermy them and uh, have a memorial to their life. Count Noble here, a life presumably full of bird hunting. Now this is a very interesting piece here. This uh, painting of a bird dog was uh, hanging in a judge's chamber in uh, the Oklahoma City Federal Building. And actually it was during the Oklahoma City bombing. And um, you can actually see the painting was damaged. There's several shrapnel marks in the painting, um, but I guess it was donated to this museum as a way, you know, as a way to commemorate that horrific event and uh, I guess remind people about the horrors of the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah, pretty crazy to think. Here is a uh, replica of the Rains Hotel. It says this was a hotel that was beloved by uh, by hunters. They would stay here during group hunting trips. Um, but sadly it says that, um, I guess it was, uh, oh, it was destroyed by fire. 19, 1986, hotel was destroyed by fire. So all that remains is, uh, is this model. This is the Hall of Fame back here. And I really love how you both have humans and dogs eligible for the uh, Hall of Fame. You can see uh, hunters hanging next to dogs here. A Hall of Fame for both dogs and humans. Here's uh, another hat over here. I guess you know when you're a uh, when you're a bird hunter, it is fashionable to have a hat completely littered with pins, which is a style choice I could definitely <laughs> agree with. I guess this is the wall of hats here. It says these hats belong to famed people in the um, bird hunting community. Not all of these are, are covered in pins, but yeah, so I guess their hats, uh, their hats are important to them. That one down there looks like Ed Gein's hat. So we got a meeting area in here. It looks like there may be a lot of gatherings and events here at the museum. But uh, back here is the wildlife room. This is kind of a room filled with taxidermy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at this. We were just surrounded on all sides by taxidermy. I guess a lot of birds. That makes sense. Because there are bird hunters. You know, like, oh, I'm gonna be careful not to walk, to walk on these. But I do, I do find these interesting. These like the old like Victorian way of uh, of displaying birds, where they're in like these ornate frames. That's a white quail right there. And up here, this is a uh, common eater, Pacific 
race. This is interesting here. This is a albino river otter. I always find uh, the albino animals to be fascinating. I don't know that I've ever seen an albino river otter though. I guess there's a different type of bird dog there. It's the uh, coyote. He doesn't even need a person to help him. He just uh, he just catches these birds on his own. The ultimate showdown here. The bobcat versus the poisonous snake. Oh, look down here. It says uh, two deer fighting. So I guess these are the skulls and antlers of two male deer or bucks that were uh, fighting with their antlers and they became so entangled that uh, they both became deceased because they could not separate. I guess it was uh, it was found like that. Although man, this 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 skull here, I think he was winning because he's got that antler like right in the eye socket of that other deer. Chaos reigns. Apparently this over here is a dog wagon. I guess they would pull this wagon while uh, they were going on a hunting trip. In each of these little compartments, they would have, uh, have a dog. I guess they could bring a whole bunch of dogs with them. I guess if you really want to learn about uh, bird dogs, just spend a few days here in the uh, bird dog library. Apparently the proper way to have a photo taken with your bird dog is to be holding their tail straight up in the air for some reason. Yeah, they're doing it in a lot of these photos. Interesting. I wonder what the reason is. If you know the reason that they uh, pose like this, leave a comment in the comment section. Yeah, look at that. All have that same pose. Or I guess sometimes you can get your uh, get your bird dog to keep their tail up like that on their own. Oh, and they do have some guns, guns, guns here, but uh, not nearly as many as the Ralph Foster Museum. <laughs> Exit through the gift shop here. They do have some t-shirts there for the Bird Dog Museum. I got some dog supplies as well, some different leashes and collars. Some uh, DVDs here, like the puppy, puppy development. So yeah, always fun stopping at just kind of uh, the different museums you see spotted along the American roadside. Even if it's a museum that, uh, you know, covers a topic that you're really not knowledgeable about, you know, who knows? You might actually learn something. Okay, these bug guts are driving me crazy. So we're going to try something, try something else. I'm going to see if I can actually maybe wipe them off with the, uh, with the squeegee here at the gas station. Okay, I think that actually worked. Yes, that's much better. I guess it just takes a little bit of a proverbial elbow grease. I guess the car wash just doesn't scrub quite hard enough to get the bug guts off. Gotta do it yourself. Sometimes a man's gotta put his own uh, elbow grease and muscle power into something to get it done. Oh my gosh, for like the first time in a week I can actually see through my windshield. Okay, the uh, bug window problem solved, but uh, I got out of my car to get something out of the back, and there is a leak in the tire. I actually heard it. You can kind of see it there, so I need to need to do something about this. Now, luckily, I'd already pulled over at a gas station, so uh, went in and purchased some of this tire fixer. 
I still don't know if this stuff actually works, but uh, it's my only shot right now. All right, got it. Got it hooked in there. Another one inject. Inject the fix a flat here. I don't know, was I supposed to shake this up? I'm so bad at this. See, it's leaking out there. Hopefully some of that is actually getting in. The tire still, still uh, hear the air coming out. So we'll, we'll empty that in there. I think that's about it. Yeah, that's all there is in there. So get the get that off there. Yeah, it's still leaking. I think I maybe have to drive it to get it to start working. Oh wait, I just heard a noise. Is it gonna stop? All right, I guess we gotta get in the car, drive a little bit, and uh, see if that'll plug it. Yeah, we are somewhere, somewhere in Mississippi. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'm, you can actually see there the alarm has come up. There's 15 PSI in that tire. I don't see it going down, so I think you have to put the foam in and then drive for a few miles, and that kind of spreads it out inside of the tire and causes it to plug up. We will try. I'm going to drive. Basically, I'm just going to keep driving until I see a, uh, a gas station with an air pump. And then we'll put some air in the tire and see if that um, see if that fixes the issue. So it's dropped a little bit. Dropped down to 13. And again, I'm in a very rural area, so I'm not seeing another gas station. And I don't... I didn't see any air. <laughs> the gas station I just left, I didn't see any air there as well so hopefully it holds up it's been at 13 there for a few minutes so maybe it's gonna hold there fingers crossed but uh, yeah really need to get some air get some air in that tire as well okay maybe I just got lucky I stumbled upon Burnsville tire here so maybe I can just go in and get uh, get a uh, get a patch on the tire we'll see if they can uh, if they're willing to take me in yeah, I can still hear the air coming out. This isn't this isn't holding. Hopefully they can help me out here. Hopefully this is a good sign here. Got a happy little man made out of a muffler waving at me. Okay, it is like later in the day now. I just spoke with the gentleman. He said he might be able to fit me in. He said probably be an hour and a half wait. And I'm like, eh, I don't have much of a choice. He said there is another tire shop um, just a little bit down the road, but I don't really, I don't know, I could maybe put a little air in the tire enough to drive down there, but uh, um, we'll see. Yeah, I'm really hoping they can uh, fit me in because the tire, tire is just about completely flat there. All right, so they actually got me in pretty fast. I probably waited maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and uh, my tire's all, all plump and refilled and patched up. Uh, so a big shout out to Burnsville Tire. And here's the crazy thing. They charged me nothing. So let me give a massive shout out here to Burnsville Tire in Burnsville, Mississippi. So I was a little worried at first when I first walked in. I walked in, um, the guy's like, oh, we're, you know, we're really backed up today. We're busy. Um, you know, I hate to tell you that, but we're just, you know, we're really backed up. Um, he suggested, he said that there is, he was like, there's another tire place down the road. Um, you know, he said we could possibly get you filled up and, 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 and head down there. He said, otherwise he said, he said, maybe, actually maybe, he said maybe about hour and a half we could get you in. And, um, I said, okay, I'll wait. I was just happy. I'm just, I'm happy that I stumbled upon, you know, a tire shop. I was literally driving down the road watching my tire pressure drop and then I saw a tire shop so I pulled in um you know I was just I was just happy to be there the fact that he was able to get me in at all was, was enough for me so it's said about an hour and a half so said, no problem I uh, sat in the lobby they were playing uh, the old Daniel 
<laughs> the old uh, uh, Daniel Boone show on the uh, on the TV in there. You know, Daniel Boone was a man, was a big man. Anyways, so um, they got me in pretty quick. Like I said, it was I probably waited like half an hour, maybe 45 minutes at the most, and um, got it in, got it fixed really quick. Um, must have been must have been fairly simple um, patch here. And then I said, oh, sir, your car's ready. I'm like, okay, I know how much I owe you. He's like, it's, it's free of charge. I'm like, wait, what? Free of charge? <laughs> like, you, you you told me you're, you know, you're backed up, and, and, now, uh, and now you're just going to do it for free? And he said, the reason I'm not charging you is because you didn't hassle me about having to wait. He said, everyone comes in here. And I tell them that there's going to be a wait, and they get really, really angry. And he said, he said it was refreshing that you're completely fine with waiting. And he said, for that, I'll do it for free. So, I, you know, it's that's, I don't know, Southern hospitality at its absolute, um, at its absolute finest. Um, you know, there's still kindness out there. There's still... Um, good people who are willing to do, you know, he obviously, obviously, you know, I would have paid. I, I, I wish, I wish I could have paid. I actually wish I, he would have just charged me because I like feel bad about it. But, um, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's, you know, just a lesson, you know, <laughs> be nice to people. Um, you know, I lose my, I, I do have, like, I do, I have a very irritable temper. <laughs> um, you know, with my neurodivergence, I have zero patience. But at the same time, I try to recognize that everyone else is also busy. Everyone else is also rushing. Everyone else is always doing um, the best that I can. So it's always nice. You know, you say please. You say thank you. You be understanding. You know, you don't huff and puff. You know, when you feel like huffing and puffing. And you know what? Maybe I was huffing and puffing a little bit on the inside, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got an emergency and they're not gonna help me. But, um, you know, I, I, I just try to be nice to people. <laughs> I do my best, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I lose my temper with people and it's embarrassing and nine times out of 10, I regret losing my temper. But um, yeah, you treat people nice and, and, and they will return the favor. I think there's a whole, what's that? That's literally the golden rule, I think, yeah treat people how you want to be treated um but yes if you are in burnsville mississippi and you need works on brakes exhaust alignment tires stop here at burnsville tire and tell them the carpet bagger sent you they didn't you know he didn't know who i was he didn't know anything about the YouTube channel. That's not what this was. I didn't, obviously I didn't mention that. I don't, I don't mention that. I don't because, um, I think that's weird. Um, I don't ever want people to treat me differently because, um, you know, they feel like I need to be treated special because I have a presence on the internet. I, I don't agree with that. So, um, yeah, I'm just super happy. I'm super happy. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, some people say, man, you have the worst luck. And sometimes it does feel like that. Sometimes I even <laughs> drift towards believing that, like with the car accident and the four rental cars that went bad and, and all that. Um, but the fact of the matter, I actually, I, I think I actually have good luck because when you drive as much as I do, again, my car, I'm looking at my spit, my odometer right now, it's 9,019 miles that I have so far driven in this car that I've had less than two months. When you travel that much road, you're, there's going to be things like this happen. Tires get leaks, sharp things are on the road, you drive through sharp things, not much you can be done about it. It's eventually gonna happen. You're eventually gonna get in car accidents, you're gonna get flat tires, you're gonna run out of gas. Although that one that one may be a little more avoidable. I've done that one too. But um, I was so lucky in this case. So I pulled over, I wanted to get something out of my cooler, grab a snack out of my cooler. I stepped out and I could hear and I'm like, what? That, I heard the noise and I'm like going over the tire. I'm like, the tire is not flat, looks fine. But then it kept bothering me. I kept looking. I'm like, maybe it's something else. Maybe just some other weird car noise. Maybe it's the air conditioner, but it felt like that hiss. And I ran my hand over the tire and I felt the air come up. 
and then by the time I got back to my car, the the, the, uh, the, the notice had come up like on the thing. I it was literally a coincidence that I just somehow caught it right when it started happening. So I was already pulled over at a gas station to to so I could get a snack out of my cooler out of the car kitchen, and um, then. Um, so I ran into the store right then. I'm like, oh no. So I ran in, got the fix a flat. Um, it didn't obviously fix it, but I think it slowed down the leak enough. Um, so I was just looking for, you know, I was looking for air, looking for a way to fill the tire back up. Um, I saw that they had air here. There's a gas station next door. I saw the air, but then when I pulled in, I'm like, there is a tire shop here. There is a tire shop next to the gas station. Um, so pulled up there and so for that I consider myself to be very lucky this is a situation that could have gone very bad and I just stumbled backwards into everything being okay here in under an hour I went from being stranded in rural Mississippi to being uh, right back on the road so uh, yeah I consider myself to be uh, to be a lucky fellow and it's all smooth sailing from here until something else happens. Took a little bit of a detour here, probably about 20 minutes off of the main road. We're here in the absolute outskirts of Cherokee, Alabama to stop off at the Coon Dog cemetery a cemetery where only dogs that hunt raccoons are allowed to be buried so one of the most specific cemeteries in the world i just figured you know earlier today in grand junction tennessee we stopped at the uh the bird dog museum so i figured we tie things together and uh stop off here at the coon dog cemetery yeah, I think it's pretty clear that uh, people with hunting dogs cherish cherish their dogs. We saw a museum dedicated to the uh, bird dog, where there was bird dogs in the Hall of Fame right next to humans. And then here, we have a place of rest for the faithful coon dog. So yes, a bird dog is a dog that helps you hunt birds. A coon dog is a dog that helps you hunt raccoons i think that i think how it works is the the is it the the dogs chase the raccoon up a tree i believe is how it works now you can see there is a monument here the key underwood key underwood memorial coon dog cemetery but unfortunately this monument is all broken someone broke the dogs off the monument there fortunately over here, you can see they built a new monument, a new bigger version of that old monument over here. Yeah, the key Underwood Coon Dog Memorial Graveyard started in 1937. You can see the dogs there, I guess chasing the raccoon up the tree. I think there's a little stone raccoon up there. You can see the little paws, but it looks like maybe the head has come off the raccoon. Yeah, let's take a look here at the cemetery. You can see there's flowers, flowers placed on all these graves. So the uh, graveyard is, um, it is maintained. Just interesting, all these different people love their dogs so much that had them, uh, had them buried here at uh, the cemetery. Here is Black Ranger, born 1962, died 1976. He was good as the best and better than the rest. So yeah, you see there's a uh, graveyard's been in operation for quite some time. This is Gypsy here, a wooden grave, 1993 to 1998. There's a picture. Oh, this dog. I guess the dog's name is Crooked, Crooked Oak Ann. You see like a photo of the dog and then a dog treeing a raccoon there. These are from uh, 1988. I wonder what the, you know, the most 
recent uh, gravestone is. Grave of bear there. We assume that's the, a dog named Bear, and there's not an actual bear buried there. Have the grave of Lassie here. I assume it's not the Lassie. I don't remember Lassie ever chasing raccoons. Okay, here's one from uh, 2010. Have tree talk and train. I can see on the the graves they have all these like initials which I'm guessing are, I don't know if they're awards or like designations for like the, 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 the bloodline, the purebred dog there. But yeah, that is uh, Tennessee Balling Barney. It says hunting partner, hunting partner and best friend of uh, Leslie Condra. The grave of Squeak there. And uh, this is Hammer Time Red. And on his grave, he says, if he treated a mailbox, you better open it and look because he got him. That's a very interesting epitaph. This has some very interesting claims and distinctions. This is Hatchy River Dotty. Says, number one, current and historical reproducing English female. Says that he produced 25 titled pups, which is more than any English female, past or present. So I'm guessing, I learned a little bit, just a little bit about horse breeding at the Kentucky Derby Museum. I'm guessing the dog breeding is similar, like in the, the, the breeding of dogs to create champion dogs. Well, here's Old Blue. Okay, this is from 2019. So uh, yeah, there's still, I guess, you know, I guess dogs are still being buried here. That was, well, I guess 2019, technically five years ago. Man, 2019 was five years ago? Wow. Yeah, this must be the newer section of the cemetery. Because I see the dates getting more recent. There's a 2020 grave there. Well, you can see this big monument here for, for Sal. And this grave here, Sykes Tequila, Sunny Delight. Yeah, they have some fun names. It looks like they actually left the uh, the dog's collar there on the grave. This grave here is unmarked; just has the cross there with the uh, with the dog's collar. Oh, I guess you have to look at the dog's collar. This is True True Blue Troops grave. Yeah, I was just wondering to myself, are Coon Dog Cemetery is a thing? Or is this the only one? And this sign here actually answers that question. It says, only cemetery of its kind in the world, only coon hounds are allowed to be buried. It says, Troop was the first dog laid to rest here in 1937. Please be careful with fire. Yeah, I don't know why you'd start a fire in a cemetery. Yeah, I was looking for Troop's grave, the oldest uh, dog here in the cemetery. I noticed this one had a lot of things left on top, rocks, pennies, and some flags. This is Troop's grave, born 1922, died 1937. Wow, dog was hunting, uh, hunting raccoons, um, you know, back, uh, back uh, during the Great Depression. So I followed my GPS. I was trying to find a barbecue place called Borhog Barbecue, and somehow I ended up at Borlog, the Bor Board and Log Company. So I thought I'd put it in wrong, but actually, Bor Borhog's is next door. Okay, this this is better. We have landed here in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Wanted a little barbecue tonight, so I looked up the. Uh, highest rated barbecue in Huntsville, and this is what came up. Boar hogs, again, not board logs, but boar hogs barbecue. And look at this, next to the menu here, we have boar Cephas. 
on the other side of the menu, there's Boar Cash. And above the restroom, there's Boar Jones. He's got little, uh, little paws there holding up the restroom sign. All right, so I grabbed my plate. Get the, taking it to the barbecue sauce station here. Now they did give me some Alabama white sauce. Like that's kind of the traditional Alabama barbecue sauce. It's the white barbecue sauce. But I kind of like some of the traditional as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the uh, of this. I guess that's like a vinegar-based barbecue sauce on there as well. So I got pork there. That's the pork. And that is the brisket, and it all looks very good. So I made it back to the table. And so, I, yeah, I got the, the combo plate with pork and brisket. They really gave me a lot of meat there. That's kind of insane, actually. And um, I got two <laughs> for my sides. Um, I noticed they had, they had mayonnaise coleslaw and vinegar coleslaw. I've never seen a place offer two different styles of coleslaw, so I just got the two different coleslaws there as my sides. Yeah, just look at that, that plate. That is so much, so much meat they have been given here. Try some of that, uh, like the very finely shredded pulled pork. Mmm, mmm, it's very good. It's got the perfect, like, smoky flavor to it. And so we got the, the white sauce here. Yeah, it's kind of a sweet, White sauce. Put a little bit of bulk on there. Mmm, mm, so good. For some of the, the brisket as well. Of course, you know, with like, like Alabama and, and, and North Carolina, you always kind of think about pork. When you think about barbecue in Texas, it's more of the brisket state. But uh, briskets, you know, I've been finding more and more brisket in uh, barbecue restaurants in this part of the southeast. So this looks really good. Mm. Yeah, super tender, but falling apart. And now, let's see which coleslaw is the best, the vinegar or mayo. Try some of the mayo there. Mm. Very good. Got a lot of black pepper in it, which adds kind of a yummy flavor. And the vinegar slaw there. Very vinegary. Mostly just cabbage and vinegar, which is good. I really like the mayo slaw. Mm, this is excellent. This is a very good barbecue. Yeah, I think coleslaw is an important component to Alabama barbecue because you know the Alabama barbecue sandwich is traditionally pulled pork and coleslaw with the uh, with the white barbecue sauce. Now that I'm eating a little more of it, this brisket has a really different flavor to it. Almost has like a how they prepare it differently here. It almost has like a almost tastes like prime rib, almost like roast beef or prime rib. Yeah, it's not as smoky. As the, as the pork, and yeah, that's perfect, perfect full pork there. Yeah, it's a very, a very yummy brisket, but a little different. If they're had brisket quite like this, it's had that prime rib taste. And of course, we have obtained membership into the Clean Plate Club. Really love the, really great barbecue uh, meal here. Especially loved the uh, pulled pork, the barbecue sauce, uh, White barbecue sauce is good, but this is also like a really vinegary sauce. It was super good. I would definitely, uh, definitely make a point of coming back here to Borhard's Barbecue uh, next time I'm in Huntsville. So today we had minor bump in the road, but uh, ended up lucking out and everything kind of fell into place. So unfortunately, I am still on that long lonesome road. Now the sun is starting to set a little bit here in Huntsville, Alabama, so I think I'm going to grab a hotel for the night and uh, we will start our adventures anew uh, tomorrow morning. Um, of course, you know, these things happen. You know, you hit bumps in the road 
anyone who just travels up and down the road like I do, you know, it's just a matter of time before something goes wrong. And hopefully when it does, we'll be fortunate enough to, to find kind people and fortunate circumstances to, uh, to make things um, a little easier. But uh, especially I wanted to thank you guys for following along with these videos and um, allowing me to continue making them. It does mean a lot, uh, especially, you know, those of you that, that watch the videos every day, that follow my adventures from day to day, that that means a lot. I really do. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Um, of course, you know, if you're new here, I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If, um, if uh, you like these videos, please subscribe. I, uh, trying, I'm trying to reach half a million subs. I think I'm getting close to about 10,000 subs away. So if you can help me reach that goal, I'd really appreciate it. You know, hit the subscribe button, give a thumbs up, ring the bell. All the things you need to do to, uh, to help out this channel are very appreciated. Of course, if you want to find other ways to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more, and I will send you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also doing personalized messages on Cameo, doing um, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, just for fun. You can send them, send them to yourself and ask me questions, whatever, uh, whatever you'd like. If you're interested in that, all that information is in the description of this video. And all those things help keep this car on the road with four inflated tires, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. <laughs>